While Darth Vader was always overconfident that he could destroy the rebels at any time, the Death Star's destruction proved otherwise. Darth Vader was now in the doghouse. He was punished by Palpatine severely, as Palpatine said he was the only one who survived to suffer his wrath. This was never forgotten by Darth Vader. In fact, it fueled his hunger for revenge. Vader vowed not only to find the rebel pilot who destroyed the Death Star, but find Princess Leia as well, as he knew she was the main one responsible for everything that the Empire had suffered. It is this that leads to a sadistic Vader to say the least, because he did not want to just destroy the rebels when he had the chance, but he wanted them to suffer, to have fear overcome them. Therefore, Vader used Queen Trios in order to sabotage the rebels, attack them while they were naively not expecting the Empire. You see, after after the Death Star's destruction, the rebels were growing in numbers and might, and it ultimately came time for Darth Vader to spring a trap. He used Queen Trios, who was forcefully devoted to Darth Vader since he made her the queen of Shutorun. Trios now heeded every word that Darth Vader spoke, and the trap that was laid was the following. Over the coming months, Queen Trios would use her wealth and power to expand and create more more fighters emboldened the fleet of the Rebellion. Leia, together with Mon Mothma, did not suspect a thing. Trios was secretly hiding the fact that she was working for the Empire and made out to be her best friend. In fact, she was quite friendly with Leia in what she later came to regret her decisions. But lastly, it was too late. When the Rebel fleet was all said and done and their ceremonies began to celebrate what the Rebels never thought they could achieve, this almighty fleet. Once they started testing out the ships, nothing worked. The throttles didn't work, hyperspace, and not even the hangar bay doors. They could not open. This is when Darth Vader appeared with the Executor and with a massive fleet as well. He, together with Admiral Ozzel, were right on schedule. The massive fleet was approaching the Rebel Station, and Admiral Ozzel asked Vader if they should begin the bombardment. The Rebels were just sitting ducks. For Vader, it was like shooting fish in a barrel, but he instructed Ozzel to wait. At first, Ozzel was puzzled by this notion, why should they wait? But Vader wanted to sense their fear. Right now, it is insufficient. They still do not understand what has happened to them. Vader wanted to give the rebels time to understand their demise. But Luke understood very well that this was all Vader. Vader. This is why the fleet was having problems and why the Empire just appeared out of nowhere at this specific moment. Now panic was starting to arise amongst the rebels. Admiral Akbar informed General Dodonna that the bay doors are sealed amongst a multitude of other problems. Now Dodonna deduced every single problem that they had. Comms were down, artillery batteries are down, hyperspace and propulsion engines are down the same way. They were unable to to launch fighters because the hangar bay doors could not open. All this work, all this effort, and for nothing. The rebels are now target practice as panic overcame Dodonna, and this is what Vader wanted. He could sense the fear in their hearts. As per instructions, Admiral Ozzel was informed by Vader to destroy the nearest cruiser. They began bombardment. Both the fleet and the executor completely destroyed Willard's ship as the rest could not do anything but watch. The rebel ship was blown to smithereens, and the rest of the rebels knew that this was coming for them too. Vader was more than satisfied. Now the rebels understand. He could feel their terror in their hearts. This was most satisfactory for a sadistic Vader who was clamoring for revenge after what the rebels did to the Empire. Admiral Ozzel, Darth Vader's right-hand man, asked for the next target. Vader had a simple answer. Hope. He told Ozzel that today, hope dies first. 
And this particular comic issue comes to an end around here. The battle continues with what is a spectacular fail again by the Empire, although they had achieved what they mostly wanted. They left the rebels crippled again. But alas, the hierarchy of the rebel faction still went on to live and escaped the grasp of Vader. If you guys want, I can cover that as well. But for this story, I wanted to tell the short, brief, but sweet cooperation between Vader and Admiral Ozil. I wanted to be fair to Ozil since we haven't seen him at his best in Empire Strikes Back and he has a very short amount of presence in that movie since he gets force choked by Darth Vader. But in this instance, you can see Darth Vader opening up to Admiral Ozil and Admiral Ozil being efficient with his position. And in that instance where Vader chokes Admiral Ozil, it doesn't seem that they were so cooperative in the end, but this this comic shows the opposite. It shows that they were a great tandem at some point in time. Unfortunately, it dissolved by the end. But of course, talk to me down below in the comments. What did you guys take away from this video and from this duo team of Darth Vader and Ozil? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below. Subscribe for dailies. Now you have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video and may the Force be with you. Until then.